The Mohawk Council of Ganawagi recently passed an executive directive prohibiting landfill in Jordodo after contaminated fill was found on the territory. This sparked reaction from council to prevent any further such events from occurring in the pristine landscape. KTV's Joe Delarone and Environment Portfolio Chief Clinton Phillips traveled to Jordodu to discuss some of the issues being faced there and what events led us to this point and where it all started, the sand pit. We're here in Jordodu at, at what is known as the sand pit which is where a lot of the uh, materials were used for roads here in uh, Jorodo for people building their, uh, their cabins and little roadways to get to their cabins. Uh, recently it was closed because it's basically all used up, about six acres or so, and that's caused some other issues to arise. And joining us is Environment Portfolio Chief Clinton Phillips. Clinton, uh, just to explain what's happened uh, recently. Well, I guess, uh, you know, for people who don't know the, the sand pit area, this is it. Uh, you're right, it's close to uh, six acres of, of land. Uh, and I guess from the, the photos that people will be seeing, or the, or the footage rather, um, it's kind of devastating to look at. It, it You know, in my mind, you know, there was some thoughts uh, given to relocating the sand pit, having people go and check out and scout for, um, you know, material basically the same as, as we see right now. Um, but that would just be making another problem in a different area of Jorodu, and that's something that I was never in favor of. You know, we have, uh, to me, um, I don't want to say the word catastrophe, but I mean, uh, take a look, take a look at you know what's happened here, what was allowed to happen. Um, I don't think we should repeat that anywhere in, in Jorodu. So now we have six acres of land. People thought maybe we can fill it up and build a man-made uh, lake. Um, scientific uh, consultants have said we can't do that without some types of uh, pumping systems to um, have uh, to ox oxygenate the water and uh, if we don't do all of that stuff it'll just turn into a swamp really fast so I don't think anybody wants a swamp up here um, so I mean basically we're left with a big crater like area in Jorodu and um, to me to to relocate this as I said already is, is just not uh, the right way to go. Uh, we have issues right now um, because people can't access the material. Um, people have uh, went out and, and brought material in um, and that material is not exactly what we would call um, clean material. Uh, I'm sure that the people who did that didn't do it knowingly. Uh, I'm confident in saying that. And, um, but we have to be mindful of what we're doing in Jorodu. You know, I think everybody who either has a cabin up here or people who just come up here for a day trip or a couple of days uh, staying with friends or maybe using the campgrounds uh, and, and sleeping in a tent, we need to be mindful of what, you know, what kind of impact are we having, you know, uh, what are our actions do, doing in terms of impacts down the road for Jorodu? I mean, you know, we just showed up here and we found beer cans, we find, uh, you know, water with some kind of oil looking slicks uh, on it. I mean, it's very concerning. You know, I've seen, you know, young people riding ATCs in the creeks. I've seen in the past people washing their car at the bridge, you know, with children swimming there and they're washing their car. So, you know, I've been in the water where I've seen oil slicks coming downstream. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happen that, you know, are out of our control. Whatever happens upstream, we're kind of held hostage to whatever they're doing. But within Jorodu proper, and things that we can manage and things that we can have an, uh, a positive impact, I think we need to always be mindful of exactly what, you know, what we have here, what kind of chunk of uh, paradise we still have and, and do our damnedest to ensure that this place stays as clean and pristine as possible. I'm struck right now by the silence. We're filming this on a Thursday morning, so it's, uh, it's pretty quiet and uh, it's, it's actually quite uh, impressive. You forget what silence is like when you live in Gatnawaga. In the old days of not that long ago, people would come up here 
to enjoy that. And that's part of the problem, I guess. That's Jorodo not being what it used to be. Exactly. And I can relate to that very much because I spent a lot of my early teen years up here, you know, countless summers in a row. And, you know, we I had a bike or we we walked to the falls. And, and that was the, the adventure of the day, walking to the falls, spending a couple hours swimming and then walking back to the cabin in time for dinner. And, and, and we did it day after day after day, you know, and... If I had my way, we'd go back to that that time frame, and uh, where people, you know, we have a hundred thousand cars a day in Ganawaga passing through our, our, our roads, you know. So when people want to get away to some peace and tranquility, you know, and come to Jorodu, they should get exactly that, and not constant disturbances of, you know, radios full blast all night long and generators booming and uh atcs flying up and down riding very dangerously and carelessly uh and waiting for an accident to happen that that should not be what joe Rodo has come to there continues to be lots of uh, growth here uh, many people build cabins and there's processes to go through so that it's it's care is taken in selection um and some of those spots that are chosen are away from the main road so they kind of have to find a way to get there so what happens now with the sand pit closed and uh, the materials here uh, you know are now not to come from here and uh, you can't use used um, asphalt and stuff like that crushed asphalt and bringing it in because again environment people have told us don't do that mm -hmm. you know at the jorodu um, table uh, jointly run by uh, ganasa daga and ganawage our coordinator is tara mccumber and you know she's very informed and in letting people know exactly what you can have you know along with the caretakers up here we have a list of, of reputable quarries that you can get gravel and pay for gravel you know once upon a time people if you were by the falls you built your cabin according to the terrain of of, of the land and so if you're on a slope you're on a slope and you just dealt dealt with it i think today a lot of people are you know they want a clean straight lawn they want if you're by a creek, they want to bulldoze trees and have access to the creek. And, you know, so again, their actions are having a negative impact, I mean, excuse me, a negative impact on the environment. And, um, you know, people need to really look at what they're doing and, you know, is it having an impact? In interestingly enough, um, you know, now that this news comes out and it was in the works for a while because there's there's been some concern. So there is a Joe Rodu community meeting coming up mm -hmm. uh, on June the 2nd, which is a Saturday, not too long from now. So um, have have you had any reaction since council made this decision? Have you talked to people? It's only been a couple of days, but I know uh, Facebook kind of lit up. People are very upset about uh, bringing in materials that could have a detrimental effect. Mm. Uh, not not a tremendous amount of people, maybe three or four tops, and uh, but but it's very new uh, in terms of news. So I suspect that uh, you know the weekend's gonna be very busy with. Um, uh, nominations for council this weekend and uh, I'll probably see more people out and about so I, I suspect I will be getting a lot of uh, feedback and so far all the feedback that I did get like the the, uh, the, the the handful have been very positive in support of you know people take Joe Rodu very seriously and people are very concerned about what's happening up here and you know I think people are at a point right now where they're people are going to speak up you know the 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 annual meeting will happen in a, in a couple of weeks up here. I encourage everyone, whether you have a cabin or not, you know, as long as you're you're Mohawk, get up here. You know, have your say. Don't be afraid to speak. That's your 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 time to, you know, let your thoughts and the thoughts of your families be heard and and what you feel, how, what the direction of Jorodu should be. Thank you very much, Clinton. And uh, once again. The meeting will be on Saturday, June the 2nd, and it'll be at the entranceway to uh, Jorodu, the main entrance, and it'll start at exactly 10 a.m., and as uh, Chief Phillips said, everyone is invited.